I'm not saying that. Nobody says that. Nobody. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we are going to be talking a little bit more about Drew, old Andy Stanley, and his beliefs about the Bible. Coming up next. I've gotten a load of subscribers lately. Thank you, first of all, to y'all and everybody else who jumped on. Uh, whenever you jumped on, everybody's different. Uh, just briefly, I was reminded um, by a friend who's also on YouTube here, Jason uh, from Dear Woke Christian. He said that it's good to reintroduce, talk about a little bit about the mission and everything else. Because, uh, you know, we think, oh, well, everybody's already seen this and that's that's not the case i do have a lot of videos we've got over 100 and i don't know some odd videos 120 130 videos something like that and i do this show a couple days a week at least right now on fridays and uh, fridays and wednesdays wednesday and friday today's wednesday at least as i record this and i also do a talk show on saturday so that drops on saturday that's called ta contra talk so the contra is just being against something the whole uh idea and 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 stance behind this channel is being against the world but for the world so contra mundum pro mundo uh it was athanasius years ago that was uh, against the world and others have been as well of course it's latin and it just sounds so much nicer than just you know being against the world for the world that being said I'm against the world, just like someone was against me, someone was against you if you're a Christian. Somebody said, hey, your worldview's not right. Somebody said, you know, here's a gospel tract, VBS, at college, you went to church, something, someone proclaimed Jesus to you. And they said, Jesus is better. And let me show you where it says that. Let me, let me appeal to your conscience that you know that there's some, you know, God-shaped hole in your heart right? You feel conviction of sin. You, you understand that lying's wrong, theft is wrong, immorality's wrong. Why are these things wrong? Well, because there's a lawgiver, that's why. And ultimately, that lawgiver requires to be with him, as anyone would, in perfection. He requires perfection, lawlessness. But we're all sin. We've all stumbled. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we know that from the book of Romans, for example. There's plenty of other passages and places from the Old and the New Testament that discuss Jesus coming and Jesus being the Word made flesh. This is the Gospel of John says this. Now, the Word is there. Uh, a lot of times people think it's, it's a capture of an old uh, idea from ancient uh, Greek philosophy of this kind of like idea, this this word, the logos is the Greek. And that's been captured and fully realized in Jesus. The book of Acts, of course, I'm actually preaching through that. I'm a pastor uh, and a husband and a, and a father. Um, not in that order necessarily, but at my church that I pastor, I'm preaching through Acts. And Acts is the early church all the actions, not like A-X-E, A-C-T-S, right? As a kid, I was thought like, acts, like you're chopping down trees. Like, what? I don't even know. Our sponsor today, oh, no, I don't have any sponsors. Not yet. Let me know if you want me to sponsor something, though. I really would. I'd be interested uh, if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, no. Anyway, um... So the Bible talks about Christ. The Bible talks about God revealing himself to his creation. That's, that's what the Bible is. It's not just an old collection of books and this and this and this. And anyway, we're going to get more into that in a moment. But briefly more about me. The point of this channel is to be against the world for the world and to help you to see that. To help you kind of look at over. Last week I dropped a video uh, you probably have seen it, possibly not, uh, but it's got a lot of views, a little bit more than normal, uh, quite a bit more than normal, uh, about MacArthur and the Julie Roy scandal and everything else. You want to check that out, it's up here. But my goal ultimately was to take this and look at it from another angle. A lot of people, even YouTubers and other people online, you can look at the comments if you're curious, uh, 
basically just taking one side. This is a slam dunk case, blah, 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 blah. I'm not really sure what is slam dunky ultimately about it because the discipline, it's about discipline from 2002, nearly 20 years ago, and then the guy was convicted three years later. Now, just because you're convicted doesn't mean you're guilty. Probably. Again, probably. But we need to be not idiots, at least as Christians. You want to be in the world... I'm going to tell you to repent and turn to the living God, the true God, not the God of your heart, the God of your idols, uh, and that sort of thing, but the living God, the true God, because he's better. And when you know that truth, the truth sets you free. You're free to understand that there is an evil world system out to get you, right? And that sounds so cliche, but it is true. <laughs> we have an enemy who roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour Paul, in his letter to the Ephesian uh, churches, it was an area of churches, not just one, talks to them at the end of the book about, we don't really fight against flesh and blood. Ukraine and Russia, you know, Canada and America, no, I don't know. We're not really fighting against each other, ultimately, so much as we're fighting against the principalities and the powers. We're fighting about against the those in the evil darkness, the system, the supernatural realm that we actually do live in, that we've been so sanitized and desensitized to for decades, really, you know, 200 years, 250 years since the uh, Enlightenment, especially since the Enlightenment, that we don't see it. So that kind of all plays into old Andy Stanley. We're going to look at him in a moment. So anyway, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a pastor here in Kentucky. And I like to use this medium. I've met a ton of great people, uh, lots of great conversations, uh, hoping to get to 500. So if you haven't subbed yet, uh, I'm close to 500. I can actually open that community tab. YouTube has some levels that you have to get to to reach whatever. So if I get to 500 subs, I can open up the community tab and communicate with people that much more easily, uh, dropping surveys. And you'll see like that. That's why I've never done that because I can't. It's discrimination. That's what it is. It's discrimination. I mean, it is discrimination, but it's not bad discrimination. Just like you go downtown, wherever that downtown is, even if it's a small downtown and you lock your door or your car and you, you know, put, hold your purse tight if you're a lady and you put your wallet in your front pocket because there's a lot of people walking around. It's discrimination. But we've been lied to that discrimination is always a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Not every time. Everybody discriminates all day long. All right. So, Drew Stan. Andy Stanley's pastor down in Georgia, North Point, but he doesn't even really like the term pastor, and he said that. This is the guy who said he needs to unhitch the Old Testament from the New Testament probably, I don't know, four years ago now, something like that, and five years ago, something like that, four years ago, and he just said a lot of just really kind of head-scratchy stuff. This is from September 2016, so almost six years ago, on its way to being six years old. And he likes to talk about Adam and Eve. I like to talk about Adam and Eve. But I've never met Adam and Eve. Have you? Put, drop a comment. Let me know if you've ever met Adam and Eve. Of course you haven't, right? But you haven't met Jesus either. You haven't met Abraham Lincoln either. Or Genghis Khan or Elizabeth I or Harriet Tubman or anybody else. Right? But we believe certain things about the past, but we don't believe other things about the past for some reason. I mean, I have a sneaking suspicion. I under, I know why. But the bottom line is, we don't believe certain things. At least, a lot of people don't. You know, Jesus was a moral teacher, but he wasn't God. That's a lot of strong belief a lot of people have. He was a good teacher. He was good. He was, he was a righteous man. Really? Is it righteous to lie to people and tell them that you're Lord of creation before Abraham was, the guy who lived 2,000 years before me, that guy, and I'm only 30 some odd, 40 years old, you know, roughly, he says that, and they say, uh, Abraham lived 2,000 years ago, and you're not before Abraham, so you're a psychopath, right? You're either a psychopath or you're a liar. Liar, lunatic, or Lord is the old adage. I believe that C.S. Lewis coined that. I've never really heard him like explain any text of scripture. I always feel like he's kind of like a community college, maybe you know, local liberal arts school, who's just, he's hes like apologizing for the Bible. Like, you don't really need to believe it. Like, I believe it. 
And that's what he says. And I want to focus really clearly on this. I want I want us to see really specifically. We're going to watch this video all the way through. This is from the polemics report. It's difficult because you get the naysayers who are like, well, you don't need to believe in Adam and Eve. You don't need to believe in a global flood to be safe. I'm not saying that. Nobody says that. Nobody. Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis has never said that. And I've listened and watched lots and lots of their material for like 15 years. They've never said that. Institute for Creation Research down in Texas never said that. John MacArthur, a lot of other people who take a literal approach to Genesis, it's just literal, just a plain reading. They never said that. The point is, though, consistency. The point is, what does the Bible say? And why do you believe this, but not this? Right? Why do you believe something about Abraham Lincoln, but you don't believe anything about George Washington? Right? But the stuff written about George Washington was actually written after Abraham Lincoln even lived. Why do we believe certain things about the past, but not others? Especially from the same bound book that has the same tradition that spans centuries, written by a number of different authors, I think it's roughly 40, and different continents, different occupations, right? Kings, peasants, fishermen, rich rulers. Why? And really, how else are we supposed to do that? Because this has been the battle for, not so much lately, but 40, 50, 60 years ago, and even into the early parts of the 20th century, it was all about authorial intent. Who gets to decide what the text means? Well, the liberals, or as they call the moderates, call themselves moderate, be very wary of that term, by the way, is that, well, I get to decide. How do we know for sure? Yeah, that's true. How do we know for sure? Well, some of it, most of it, a lot of it is achieved by faith. Just like I believe that the sun's going to come up. Right? Based on historical this and this and this in the past, based on a God who created, who has a good character, who's consistent, the sun, though it's 93 million miles away, will come up, quote unquote, today or tomorrow or the next day. Or you might be watching and you're like, the sun is up. Now, of course, it's not up, but we all know what I mean, right? Because we're focused on our earth. The sun is not doing anything, it's the earth that's rotating, right? We're going to watch it a little bit faster. Let's go. You do this um, a lot. You can talk about Adam and Eve, and you can kind of address, hey, you may not believe in Adam and Eve, but you unpack it by going back to Jesus. Can you give us, I think that's a good example. Yeah, well, if I can take a step back and tell me if I'm not answering your question. I think that we have done previous generations, especially of children and high school students, a terrible disservice by the way we talk about the Bible. I remember my freshman English class at Georgia State University. We were talking about literature. It was a, it was a literature class, and one of the pieces of literature was the Bible. And my teacher was not an anti-religious person, but began to talk about the myth, the creation myth, other creation myths. And without meaning to, began to slowly dismantle the faith of every single person in there who had grown up in church. When she was finished, all of us were convinced that there are many creation myths. The story of Adam and Eve is a creation myth. It's one of many. Let's move on to the next topic. Well, because of the way the scripture had been presented to me and probably everybody in the class, it's a house of cards. So as soon as you pull out one piece of the Bible... Okay, that's one minute out of the three. So, without meaning to, no, 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 Drew, she was meaning to. I had an anthropology professor at a community college, same thing, he wanted to, he wanted to do that. He said he didn't believe in evolution, he knew it was true. Because, you know, he's billions of years old and he's seen the natural processes taking place for no apparent reason over billions of years. No, not even close, it's just hubris. But anyway, Andy says, it's just myth, there's many creation myths, this and this and this. Okay, what's the point? Would we not expect to have multiple flood legends from different cultures all over the world if there wasn't a global flood? Yes, that's exactly what we would expect. Right? Taking something much newer, there's all sorts of slave, antebellum slavery, 19th century slavery stories of old slaves, freed slaves, right? At the end of the war, slavery is abolished, right? And... There are slaves then who go tell the story and then they disperse. And certainly not all the ancestors of slaves are living in the United States, but living other places. And they've probably told their grandchildren and their grandchildren are probably very old or maybe great grandchildren and so on. There are stories and accounts of, oh yes, our great, great grandfather 
was this and this and this and this. And he held his story and he was a slave in Georgia. He was a slave in South Carolina and they picked cotton and they did this and they did. And there's also, I guarantee you that exists. But is that because slavery didn't happen? Because antebellum chattel slavery was just a myth? No. It literally the opposite. It exists because it happened. So same thing with creation. It happened. It's not a myth. Now, a myth, again, what if I said the myth of the Holocaust, right? Or the myth of September 11th, or the myth of World War II, the myth of Hitler, the myth of Stalin, the myth of Mao, the myth of slavery, the myth of racism. What if I use these words? You would say, ah, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now, myth, in one sense, Dictionary, thesaurus, folk tale, story, folk story, legend. You say legend. Well, we think, you know, King Arthur. Tale, fable. Fable, you know, old wives' fables. Oh, that's just, that's just made up. Misconception is the second part. That's their thesaurus. The dictionary, right, those are synonyms. The dictionary, a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of the people or explaining some natural or spiritual social phenomenon and typically involving supernatural beings or events. So that's really not actually a bad word to use. The problem is it has such bad baggage, as a lot of words do, and words do change definition, though this is still very much the main definition in many respects. Because it is a house of cards, by the way, Drew. It is. Because if you don't believe this, well, it's really hard to believe Romans 5 as one example. I mean, there's a plenary amount of examples, but one example, Romans 5, talks about Jesus and Adam. I will say, as soon as you this is a myth, well, well then immediately it's like, this is a myth, well, well then immediately, immediately it's like, it's the foundation of our faith is, is not, the foundation, the foundation of our faith is not, not the infallibility, the foundation of our faith is not, the foundation of our faith is not, the foundation of our faith is always. Okay, I got it. He's just lying. That's just a lie. The foundation of our faith is not the scripture. That's literally exactly the point. Unless you want to just appeal to reason or appeal to creation. Now he goes on to say, oh, it's Jesus. Yes, Drew. Sure, ultimately I get what you're saying. The foundation of our faith, we are Christians. We are not Biblians, right? I-A-N is just from something, of something, right? Canadian or Indian or Russian, right? I-A-N, Christ I-N. That's what a Christian is. We're of Christ. Followers of Jesus. We're not followers of the Bible. Sure, I get it. We're not bibliolatrists. But because the Bible is God's word, we love the Bible. Because how else is God? Yes, Psalm 19, God reveals himself. The stars declare the glory of God. Romans 1 says that God revealed it to them. They are without excuse. Andy, you, me, the people in Africa, the middle people in the middle of anywhere, nowhere, are without excuse because God has shown it to them, Romans 1 tells us. Shown it to them. And so he's, he's here like, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Scripture. But where do we find Jesus in the Scripture, in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament? So you cannot hitch anything, Drew. And I know I've probably said some of this already, but... For him to just say the foundation of our faith isn't the Bible is, even if that's true, which is not true, at least I don't, I'm, I might be misunderstanding him. It's possible, right? Because I'm not perfect. <laughs> not even close. But to say that is like using the word myth, right? The idea, all well, oh, the, the story, the, I mean, on and on and on and on. We just do this all the time with all sorts of stuff. Let's go a little bit further, see how much I can bear. It is something that happened. Who is Jesus? That's always the issue. The scripture is simply a collection of ancient documents that tells us that story. So when we talk about the scriptures, and especially the um, reliability of the scriptures, I think any time that we can tie the Old Testament especially back to Jesus, we have done everybody, Christians and non-Christians alike, an incredible service by letting them know, you know what? You can believe that the Adam and Eve story is a creation myth. So what? Who is Jesus? And then to your point, when I deal with Adam and Eve, I'm quick to say, hey, this is one of those odd stories. This is that story you heard growing up about two naked people running around in a garden. And who can believe that? And there are many creation myths. But here's why I believe this actually happened. Not because the Bible says so, 
but because in the Gospels, Jesus talked about Adam and Eve. And it appears to me that he believed they were actually historical figures. And if he believed they were historical, I believe they were historical. Because anybody that can predict their own death and resurrection and pull it off, I just believe anything they say. Mm -hmm. So what have I communicated? I've communicated that even though we're going to talk about Genesis and the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. the issue is, who is Jesus? Right. And I think any time that we can weave that small little apologetic into our teaching and preaching, it helps our high school students and it helps our college students understand the foundation of my faith is not an infallible Bible. It's something that happened in history. Jesus came into the world, walked on the earth, represented God, was God, and rose from the dead. And that's a very, very important piece, or a very, very important um, part of our approach uh, to the scripture every single week. Okay. Okay. So he talks about college students, high school, whatever. Well, my testimony is what part of it, a lot of part of it was a lot of part of it. Sixth grade, I remember making a timeline of the universe, history of the world. And it goes back to Lucy and the Ice Age and missing links and all sorts of stuff, right? Lucy, if you remember, it was found in the 70s. There were just bones from a, an astro, uh, uh, I never pronounce it right, Astrolopithecus, basically a small monkey squirrel type thing, right? Like a big monkey squirrel. Not a human, not a missing link at all. Now, again, if there's missing links, we should have lots and lots of, but they're still missing, right? There's no real missing links between man and, and chimpanzee or transitional fossils or anything else. But if this happened, we would have millions of them because that's what materialistic evolution demands. Now, he's not saying, I'm talking about evolution at all, but this is all baked into the cake of denying a literal or just direct reading of Genesis, Adam and Eve as actual people, etc. So he says all this. And he's like, you can believe it. And I believe it because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's in the Bible. But you don't have to believe the Bible. Did you catch that? Right? So he's saying the infallibility of the scripture isn't important. It really doesn't matter at all. You can believe this. You don't have to believe that. But what I do is I believe Jesus. And I believe if you, if you predict your own death and you rise again from the dead, I'm going to believe you. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um... Except for uh, Drew. So I would ask him, Drew, where is that found exactly? It's, it's found in the Bible, isn't it? And so if you don't trust Genesis or Exodus that says God created in six days and rested on the seventh day, therefore you should have a Sabbath day, right? A direct normal reading. This is normal people, regular people. They're not stupid, they're not prehistoric, but if you have that built into Darwinism that people are dumber and we're getting smarter as opposed to smarter and we're getting dumber, well then you're going to believe that. It's easy to be tricked. And I'm helping you, hopefully, hopefully, <clears throat> be against that nonsense, to push against that because that's the difference, right? The whole difference is what does the text say? And can we believe it? Is it trustworthy? And if I told my wife, I said, yeah, I'm going to meet so-and-so for coffee later, right? And she said, okay, yeah, that sounds good. And somebody from our church sees me at Walmart talking to some random people at that same time. And they don't say hi because they're in a hurry and whatever. And then they text Jenny and like, oh, hey, blah, 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 blah. I wanted to remind you of something. And I just saw Richard at Walmart. And Jenny would be like, I thought he was supposed to be at coffee. That's weird. And then so she asks me later... And I say, oh, yeah, I didn't, I, I just, I didn't actually tell you the truth. Um, I was just going to go hang out at Walmart with a couple people. But I know you don't really like Bob. And so I just, I didn't really want to upset you. So I just, I just didn't, I just didn't tell you. She, she'd be like, well, you, you told me you were going to coffee. You didn't even go to coffee? No, I didn't. I didn't. I actually didn't even see Joe, who I was going to spend time with at coffee. I went and saw Bob and his friends. And they're kind of seedy people. And you're not really happy about me hanging out with them, which is why I didn't tell you. Would you think that I'm a liar? Yeah. So this person, my wife, she's lied to by me. Now, if I do this on a habitual time, then I would easily categorize myself as a liar. Everybody should, because I am. I'm not trustworthy. So then if I tell her, hey, I'm going to the office, uh, I'm going to work a little late. What is she going to do? Is she going to believe me the next day or two days later or a week later after this incident with Bob and his friends? And she's like, I mean, I understand you're trying to share the gospel with him and this and that, but like, he's a really bad dude. And you know, I just, I just don't like his influence on you or whatever. Right. She's never told me this, but hypothetically, but I don't want her to know that I'm there. Therefore this, okay. 
or worse, right? I go to a strip club, something like that. And I tell her one thing, but I'd go do something else. Is that not what's happening with the scripture? If you're saying, oh yeah, Adam and Eve, yeah, there's a lot of stories. There's just a lot of different myths. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that though. Believe in Jesus. That's literally the opposite. And going back to my testimony in sixth grade and even into college with my anthropology teacher at 20 years old, uh, I was, you know, I don't believe in evolution. I know it's true. That didn't help my faith at all. What helped my faith, because I wasn't a believer at that point, what helped my faith is going to a faithful church that proclaimed the gospel. And not just the gospel only that say, well, Jesus loves you and died for your sins, but that Jesus is the second Adam, that Jesus is the incarnate word. That I believe, the pastor would say, in a literal Adam and Eve, in a literal global flood, in literal judgment, just as in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be, Jesus says. Judgment. Right? Well, judgment's not really happening. You don't believe this, you don't believe that, you don't believe this, you don't believe that. On and on and on and on. Right? Point is, old Drew Stan and you're actually harming people, not helping people. Oh, it's for our college students and our kids and our high schoolers. No, it's literally the opposite. Literally the opposite, man. Because you're telling them, you can believe that, that's fine, but you should really believe in Jesus. And they're like, yeah, so I can believe the last quarter of this book, right? Page 76 to 100. Pages one through 75, well, you can believe it if you want to. I mean, it's in there just, Kind of for posterity's sake. The publisher, they needed to, you know, fill up some stuff and some space, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, like, I, I, <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Like, like, again, that sounds preposterous, right? Because it is. But somehow we're supposed to believe that Andy Stanley believes in a literal Adam and Eve because Jesus talked about it. Okay, that's fine. Well, that's why I do too, because that's what's in the Bible. Do we understand? Like his logic is just, he's like, he's on the little road of logic and then it just, and it's like, he gets a flat and the engine blows up and he then just decides to like crash his car and then just start walking off into the sunset. Like it's not even, it's any, he's not even trying at this point. Oh, it's for this and this and this. And then at the end of the, ah, you're just, I love he's like, I'm trying to communicate. Now, maybe I'm not communicating well, you know, sometimes I talk too much and, you know, I've had people tell me that. And that's just that's just my identity. It's who I am. I'm a talker. Uh, so... How dare you question my personal identity? I hope this was helpful. I really do. Um, like I said, I do this show two times a week, sometimes three. If, I, if I'm able to do more, I will do more. Uh, obviously, the bigger a channel grows, generally you can get monetized, you can get sponsors, you can get this and this and this. I'd rather not have ads on here personally. I'd rather have, you know, Patreon or something like that. I haven't set any of that up yet. Uh, I don't know if anybody would give to that, but this does take time, uh, and and usually it's a few hours per video, uh, even just in the recording and everything else. But it does take some work. It's not a ton of work, but it does take some work. That being said. When I reach certain goals, hopefully once I hit 2,000 sub subscribers, Lord willing, that will happen and I'll you know open up Patreon and other such things and maybe be able to produce more videos. But right now, this show, Wednesdays and Fridays, I'd like to do it in the mornings. This one's not the morning today, but it is what it is. And then Saturday, I do Contra Talk, where I talk to, it's been mostly dudes, although I've talked to a few ladies. Um... Just about testimonies, talking about different just different topics. A lot of SBC stuff because I, I'm a pastor in the SBC. I think it's time to fight, by the way. It's not time to abandon ship. Personally, I think it's time to fight. But anyway. <clears throat> Tomorrow I do have a live with the first vice president of the SBC. There's two vice presidents. There's a president, vice president, first vice president, second, right? The first president or the president is Ed Litton, the scandalous Ed Litton. I did some videos back over the summer. Maybe you jumped on for that. Uh, let me know. I'm curious. Just tell me when you uh, subscribed, if you kind of have an idea like, oh, December or just now or, you know, last July or whatever. I'm just curious. So drop a comment. Let me know. Um, but beyond that, there's Ed Litton and then there's two other guys. Lee Brand is the first vice president. Really friendly, uh, humble guy, tons of experience. <laughs> He's also a black guy, so that's all, you know, intersectional stuff. But he's not a wokey, right? He doesn't hold to that ideology at all. He holds to the scripture. 
And I know other people would say, oh, we do too, blah, blah, blah. Fine, that's not the point. I'm interviewing him tomorrow. Live conversation uh, for Contra Talk. Usually those are pre-recorded. This is going to be live, little live studio audience. Not studio. Whatever. It's going to be there. And I'm gonna, we're going to take questions towards the end. So if you do have a question, uh, drop in. It's going to be 1.30 Central Time. 1.30 Central Time. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Until next time, be against the world for the world. Take care.